Yo guys, this is Accept and I'm gonna make you guys a top plane tier list today for patch 10.1 which is the first patch of season 10. Uh, my main goal with this tier list is just for you guys to get a better understanding of uh, which champions are good right now, which champions are bad and which champions you should avoid and maybe try to learn more. Uh, personally I am a diamond player, uh, was high diamond on the US for practically all of uh, season 9 and I have been competing against Monsters players for a while now uh, so of course I'm not the best player out there but I think my opinion is kind of valid but if you have a different opinion uh, feel free to leave a comment below or like yeah just talk about your opinion as well share your opinion with me uh, my mind is not unchangeable of course all right but let's just start off with alphabetical order so let's start off with Aatrox right here I think Aatrox personally I think he's a pretty strong champion, uh, mainly because he can abuse both Death Stones and uh, Black Cleaver and Conqueror at the same time really well. Uh, he doesn't really have a hard time stacking up his Conqueror, mainly because uh, he has three Qs, uh, so if he hits those he's gonna be able to proc his Conqueror up really quickly and in the uh, next rotation he can use all in. Uh, so his healing is really insane with this champion, especially in team fights with Conqueror. Um, therefore, personally, I would maybe put him in S tier, but I'm gonna put him in A tier. And the reason for that is a lot of the meta champions right now in the top lane, for example, Fiora, uh, Kled, maybe even like Gangplank or Akali, uh, they do pretty well against him usually. Uh, of course, Aatrox is a really like champion that you can be really skilled at or really bad at. So if you're really good at Aatrox, I think uh, even in the worst matchups, you can beat them. It's kind of like Gangplank. For example, where if you are just really good at the champion, you can beat the matchup. Uh, but I'm gonna put him in A tier. I don't think he should be higher. Uh, and yeah, let's just keep on going. Akali, I think, personally, I think Akali is stronger than Aatrox right now. Uh, I said Aatrox has a really good time stacking up his Conqueror and that's why he's so strong. Uh, which is true, but it's also true for Akali and she might even have an easier time than Aatrox. And she's also really good in team fights. She can assassinate backlines, and she's really good in lane phase. She's just good at all times of the game. Uh, Conqueror synergizes really well with her because she always has her Q up, and she just deals a lot of damage. So personally, I'm gonna put her in S tier. I could see her going into S plus, but personally, I don't think she's that good. I think she's really good, but she's counter playable. And she's also kind of vulnerable to ganks in the early game. Like if you shut her down early on, she's kind of fucked. Uh, and she also has semi-bad matchups in top lane. At least compared to mid lane, I feel like. Uh, okay, let's keep on going. Camille. I feel like Camille is also a really strong champion. Uh, mainly because she's pretty good against tanks. And she doesn't suffer the same f problem as Fiora does. Where you can just build anti-heal against her. And... She's basically not even a champion anymore. Uh, she has a really good engage with her E and her ult. And she's really good split push, of course. And she deals mixed damage. That's why she's good, so good at tanks. Uh, she does decent with Conqueror. Uh, so personally, I would either put her at A tier or S tier. But I feel like she's more leaning towards A tier than S tier, I feel like. Uh, but I feel like she's also stronger than Aatrox. That's the thing. But she's not... As good as Akali, so I feel like she's somewhere in the middle. So she's, I'm gonna put her in A tier for now, uh, but keep it in mind, uh, she's a really good champion to learn. Uh, probably as good as Fiora, if not even better. Really good split push, really good in solo queue. Um, yeah, let's keep on going uh, with Shogaf. Uh, well, this is a champion I don't have that much love for, personally. Remember, this is a solo queue list. Uh, which is actually why I should put a call or Camille in S tier because she's really good in solo if you actually. That's a fair point. But anyways, Shogaf. I feel like he's obviously a tank. You can build him AP, but I don't think it's that strong. It's he becomes really squishy with AP, and as a tank, there's just so much better tanks. I feel like uh, if you're really good at him, of course you can play him. But I feel like he's weak in the early game and he's not super strong in the late game because he doesn't have some insane engage or anything or insane damage or like he's super tanky because he gets a lot of health for free which is true but i just feel like champions like orn for example uh sion 
and yeah, some other tanks, Shen even, are just a lot stronger than him. So therefore I'm personally gonna put Shogath at C tier. This is not a champion I would personally pick in solo queue. Alright, let's keep on going. Uh, Darius. Well, this is a champion that I don't really play a lot myself, but I think he's, he's pretty strong. Uh, he also abuses Conqueror pretty well. Um, if you snowball with him, you're just gonna stomp the game throughout. Uh, he doesn't really need TP because he usually gets control of the lane against almost any matchup. Uh, some matchups he struggled against, if you're wondering, is maybe Rice, maybe Gangplank, and maybe Clud. Cannon as well, I guess. And those are like the four main. If you're really good at something like Orn, of course you can play that against him. Fiora even. But like, he's a really hard champion to play against because you, you can't really afford any mistakes. And he's a pretty easy champion to play. And also a pretty easy champion to snowball with. And the champion that's really strong in the early game. So personally I'm gonna put him at C tier. Or S tier, I mean. Uh, he's definitely stronger than Aatrox and on par with these two, for, of course, I feel like. Uh, Dr. Mundo, this is also a champion I don't have a lot of love for, but I feel like he's not that weak, to be honest. Uh, he kind of faces the same problem with Shogaf, he doesn't have a true engage uh, as a tank, but he's really tanky. Uh, but I still feel like he's stronger than Shogaf because he has an easier time in the laning phase, he can actually... Like almost bully his opponent sometimes if he's in a good enough matchup. And he could also uh, split push later on compared to Shogaf. Like Shogaf of course he can push waves on the sideline. Every champion almost can do that as long as they have TP. Uh, but I feel like Mundo just does it kind of a bit more efficiently because he's really good at one once. Personally I'm gonna put him a B tier. The only reason why I could see every Shogaf being better than Dr. Mundo is because some of the meta champions... Uh, Fiora, uh, Kled, Kali, like they are strong, or Camille even, like they are stronger against Mundo than they are against Shogaf, I feel like. But overall, I feel like Mundo is a better champion. Alright, Fiora. I feel like this is a pretty strong champion. Uh, the main problem with her is that if you go into your laning phase and you're like even or semi behind on farm, let's say against something like a Norm, a GP, or something, like. Like, okay, that's two bad examples, I guess, because they really hard counter. But like, let's say something that's not supposed to counter, like Orn, for example. You go into laning phase, and you kind of try to bully him out of farming in the early game. But it's kind of hard because you need to fight in the minion wave, as Fiora, to really be able to get any damage off. So your compensation for that is you get healing by proccing your vitals, of course. But as soon as Orn, as a tank, gets Bramble West, that's going to be a problem. And if you're facing something, let's say Jace, uh, or I don't know, maybe even Kled. Let, yeah, Kled is a good example because Fiora is supposed to do really good against Kled. Uh, he can just go, or actually, yeah, let's say he didn't have his anti him now. He can just go Executioner's Calling, and she's going to be a lot weaker of a champion. Uh, so like every champion that Fiora does really well against, it's kind of gets negated as soon as you get their anti-heal item and she's just not gonna be as good she and she's kind of one-dimensional compared to Camille who is also a split pusher Camille can at least team fight with her insane engages long range engages uh, like cleanups and everything of course you can do that as well but it's a lot more specific uh, I feel like and you have to you you don't you can't afford any mistakes on this champion either so I feel like I should put her at eight here she's definitely weaker than Camille I feel like she's a bit stronger than Aatrox, but mainly because the, most of the champions that are played right now uh, is better matchups for Fiora than Aatrox. Alright, let's keep on going. Uh, Gangplank. Well, this is a champion I personally feel like is not that strong in solo queue. Uh, you take a lot of time to scale. You can't afford to die anytime, like, unnecessarily. So, this is a champion I would recommend you not learning, to be honest. Uh, I play him a lot. It's not paying off right now, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, I feel like the he could maybe become good. Uh, I feel like a lot of the reason why top laners are good right now, uh, or most top laners are good, is because they can use Conquer. But Gangplank is one of the top laners that don't use Conquer. Uh, and it's maybe the only bruiser that doesn't use it. Uh, almost every bruiser uses it, and like, like some 
non bruisers do it as well, like ADCs or mages, for example. And Gangplank is maybe the like only bruiser that, and especially in the top lane, that doesn't go for go conquer. It's like the tanks and Gangplank that don't go for conquer, and they go for like grasp or aftershock instead. So personally, I would say either B tier or C tier. I'm personally gonna put him at C tier. I don't feel like he's that strong. It takes way too long to scale in the current meta, and yeah, the game is just over as soon as you can play the game almost. And if you accidentally make any mistakes, your game is just over. So I don't feel like he's that strong, and he can't use conquer as I said. All right, Garen. I feel like this is a champion that's not that strong either, but at least he uses conquer. Uh, this is also like almost a tank, but not a tank. In a way, it's like a bruiser tank. And I feel like the main problem with Garen is that he doesn't have any gap closers. Like his way to engage and to fight people is just flat out run at them. If you look at, for example, Camille, if you want to fight someone, you just E at her or E at them. Same with Fiora, you just Q at them, Aatrox, everything. Garen just kind of has to run up to, at them because he doesn't have any range abilities, he doesn't have any dashes, he just has his movements be buffed from his Q. And that's what he got going for him. Therefore I don't feel like he's that strong. I'm gonna put him at C tier as well. I could see him being B tier, but maybe in some specific matchups, but I feel like usually you just have to avoid his E and you're gonna be fine against him. Alright, so let's get on with Gnar. I think Gnar is an underrated champion. Uh, he can use Conqueror. I personally like Conqueror on him, but it's kind of risky, I would say. I think maybe Fleet Footwork or even Grasp, as I personally enjoy playing him, uh, is probably the best. Uh, but he's still a really strong champion because he doesn't take like a lot of skill to play. Uh, it's not that hard to play in the laning phase. Of course, it's a range champion. Uh, you only have to really watch out when you're mega. And in teamfights, he's exceptional. His ult is really good. He's done, he's done his W is really good. The only problem with him in teamfights is that he's not good when he doesn't have his mega. Uh, he's decent, of course, but he's just a damage dealer, nothing more. And it's really the like multi-man stun you're looking for on him. So personally, I would put him a beat beat here. He's definitely at least as strong as Mundo, like probably even stronger to be honest, because I feel like Mundo doesn't have any CC. He doesn't have anything going for him in teamfights. He only has his split push and his tankiness going. Uh, Nor has his kind of tankiness, his split push and his team fight. So like, I would definitely say he's stronger than Mundo. While Mundo is like B to C tier, uh, Nor is definitely B to A tier. All right, let's go for Hikarim. Uh, Hikarim is not really a top lane right now, I would say. Like, of course, he can be played top lane. I have seen it occasionally in this patch, but I would personally not recommend you going for him. Uh, he's pretty good into Akali, but like a lot of champions he is struggle against, and he's not that strong. His main strength is that he doesn't have to take flash, or he can go ignite and TP. And But otherwise I don't feel like he has that much going for him. He of course can use Conqueror, I guess, and that's about it. If you do get ahead, he's, he can be pretty strong because you just charge at enemies and you win. But I would personally put him at C tier as well. He's not as good as Bundo, Nar, and especially not Aatrox or Fiora. Uh, but he can have his moments, it's not D tier for sure. Alright, Heimerdinger. Well, I feel like this is a champion that takes a lot of skill to play, even though it might not like seem like it. You have to have a really good understanding of the champion to be able to play him. Uh, because I feel like a lot of bad Heimerdingers, you just pick him, and then they monkey push all the time, and then they end up getting ganked or all in or whatever, and they die. And then their game is kind of over because you can't really fall behind with a champion that you're perma monkey pushing on. Uh, but when you do play him right, I feel like he is not super rewarding, sadly. I feel like he's kind of a skillful champion, but uh, his main damage is from his turrets, of course. But in team fights, that doesn't really do a lot. Of course, it does something in, in split push, but he doesn't have a lot of things going for him in the split push because he usually just gets like out 1v1 by all of these bruisers that use conqueror better than him. So I would personally put him at C or maybe B tier in some cases. But I feel like to play against Heimerdinger you just need to farm, you need to scale, 
Uh, play against like just play against Heimerdinger like you would any other range champion. Don't take CS that you are gonna take unnecessary damage for. Uh, try to get all the XP of course, and if you can get as much farm as possible. If you can't, just accept it and wait for your ganks. So personally, I would put him at C tier. He's not stronger than any other range top lane, that's for sure. All right, Ilawe. I feel like this is a pretty pretty strong champion. Kind of underrated. Uh, the reason for that is once again they use conquer. She uses conquer real well, and she also does kind of fine against uh, some of these meta champions. So I would personally put her at A tier. As soon as she get pops her ult or gets her ult, uh, she's gonna do a lot of damage, and her E is just inc an incredible ability and really annoying to play against. Uh, personally, when I play against Ilawe and get hit by her E, I just like um I don't want to play anymore. Like you lose half your HP. From one skill shot and you're like ah oh, shit man get slowed and everything you have to dodge her tentacles can't farm properly you lose so much if you get hit by that ability uh, her main weakness if you do end up playing against her is that you want to try to just abuse her when she doesn't have e so as soon as she pops her e and misses it you can try to poke her out or all in her uh, but when she gets her level six it's kind of hard to all in her of course because she's just gonna pop her ult and deal tons of damage uh, Alright, but let's keep on going. Aurelia, I feel like this is a top laner that has her moments. She's not that strong, I would say. Uh, but she has her matchups, that's like why she could be strong. I think she's strong, or could be strong because of Conqueror, and because of the matchups. If she has a bad matchup, she's just pure out fucked, uh, to be honest. I would personally put her B tier. She's definitely stronger than these champions, I would say. Uh, because she has more outplay potential, she has more uh, wave control, and yeah, she's just a better champion, she abuses Conqueror better. Um, yeah, I would say she's a bit stronger than them. She can split push, she can team fight, so she uh, do have that going for her, but if she falls behind, which is kind of easier to do on her, because she's not that strong against most other top laners, uh, she can be kind of hard to play, of course. Uh, but anyways, let's keep on going. Jax. So, this uh, champion I don't really know about, I don't see him a lot, but I feel like he could be pretty strong with Conqueror once again. But the main problem with Jax is that he doesn't have any split push going, or team fight. I mean, going for him. He's kind of the same as Fiora. Like, if you look at these two champions, they are basically the same, except that they are s both stronger in different metas. Fiora is a better, uh, what's it called, tank destroyer of course, while Jax is a better split pusher and like the source squishes really well. Personally, I feel like Jax is a bit weaker than Fiora right now. I would put him at B tier. And the reason for that is that a lot of laners currently is not that good for him. Like, let's say, for example, Akali, Camille, or Darius, like, that you just can't play the game for Jax. Uh, of course, he does well against Kled. I'm not gonna deny that. It's one of the best matchups for Jax and one of the worst for Kled. But so is Fiora, like Fiora the source clad as well, it's an even bigger counter and an even worse uh, like matchup for Kled. And which is probably the strongest champion right now, to be honest. And also Mordekaiser uh, there is a lot better for Fiora than Jax. So I would say personally, Fiora is better right now. Uh, of course, when you get your anti-heal item against Fiora, she's gonna be a bit weaker, but she's not gonna be worse than Jax. That's my opinion, at least. Uh, Jace. Well, this is a champion I love to play, but I feel like he's not that strong. He takes a bit of time to scale because it really nerfed his AD, but it buffed his scaling on AD. So you have to play for late game a bit more. You go for your tier build, you go for your lethality items, but it's kind of hard to play him. He's a difficult champion, and I don't feel like he's a rewarding difficult champion. Uh, if you have a really good lane phase, and you have a jungler that you know is going to play around you, then you can of course win your 2v2s, abuse your conqueror really well, and you can get to the late game pretty quickly as well. Like he's a really hard snowballing sh like sh champion. Like he snowballs maybe even as hard as Darius if you do it correctly. But I feel like he's not that rewarding, especially not in solo queue. I feel like he could be really good in team play if you have a good jungler that wants to play around you and you have a good comp drafted for playing around Jace in the early game. But personally in solo queue, I would probably put him at like either B or C tier, I'm gonna be kind of put him at B tier because I feel like he still has uh, the like in in a one v one he should win. That's his design. 
but I feel like it takes too long to scale. I feel like Riot kind of destroyed the champion. He should be an early game focus champion and not a late game focus champion. Alright, uh, Kale, I feel like this is a pretty weak champion, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, she doesn't have that much going for her, uh, except her late game. And with her late game, it's like, it gets, it takes a while to get to, but she, it's not even that rewarding anymore, I would say. Like, before you could use Kleptomancy on her and get to your late game a lot quicker, and you would be a lot stronger then as well, but now it's gonna take more time, and you're, you're gonna be stronger than quite a bit of champions in the top lane, I'm not gonna lie, but you're not gonna be that much stronger. You're gonna exist, but like you're not gonna be the game changer. I would personally put Kale at C tier. Because she doesn't use Conqueror really well, she doesn't really use any like rune really well. And she gets bullied by a lot of other top laners. And what she does have going for her is of course that she has range at level six now, but still she's not a strong champion when she gets level six. Alright, Kenan. This is a lot stronger champion than Kale, that's for sure. Uh, I feel like he is good in solo queue, but in higher elos. He's not that good in lower elos, I feel like, because uh, a lot of times when you play cannon, you want to play around your summoners, you want to play around your flash and your TP, so you can get good flanks and flash into the team. Enemy team, that is. And if you do get a good flash ult off, that can just instantly win the game. The problem with low relos, like even diamond or low monsters, low grand monsters, is that you're not gonna get to play around your summoner spells, but you're, like your team is just gonna try to force fights all the time. Of course your laning phase is kinda nice for you, but you don't have the kleptomancy anymore as you did before, and I feel like he's just not that rewarding. Uh, he's a team fight design champion, uh, and you have to play around your summoner spells, but it's kinda hard to do in solo queue. So I would personally put him at B tier because he's definitely better than Kale and probably as good as Jace, I would say. Alright, Kled. I feel like Kled is probably S plus, like there's nothing to say about it. Personally, I play a lot of Kled. Uh, most people, including myself, don't like to call my champion broken, but uh, every top player I hear, every player I hear, just talks about his champion all the time. Like at this point, I'm not even convinced it's me playing the champion really well. I'm just like at this point I just consider the champion to be really good, he uses Conqueror super well with his healing, uh, he of course has anti-heal which is really good against most champions right now, uh, his build path is so good against most champ champions right now, you usually go Tiamat into Black Cleaver and that's just so good against almost every champion, you don't have to go for Triforce, it's just so weak like on Kled, but the Black Cleaver is just incredible on him, uh, so you save a lot of gold that way, the anti-heal is really nice, everything is just nice on him. Uh, yeah, he's probably, maybe even the best player in the game right now. Uh, he has a really good engage, like really good split push, really good 1v1 potential, really good lane phase. Like I don't think any champion beats him at lane phase, except for maybe Fiora and Jax if you play them really well. But you can't really bully Kled out of lane usually. The way you win the matchup for Fiora or Jax is that you survive the lane phase and you outscale him. Uh, if you use your defensive abilities offensively, you're going to die. Like Kled, without your defensive abilities, Kled is gonna going to outtrade you, and you're going to lose. So even the worst matchups are playable now for Kled. All right, Malphite. This is once again a champion I don't feel like is super strong. Uh, usually, like the same as most other tanks, uh, Shoga from Mundo, but except this time he stacks resistances and not HP. I feel like he's a bit stronger than both of these two though. Uh, I would put him at B tier personally, because I don't feel like he's as strong as Fiora, Ilawa or Aatrox. But he's definitely stronger than Mundo, that's for sure. Uh, but what he does have going for him, I guess is that, of course, that he can stack armor. But when he plays against something like Akali or Camille, it can be kind of hard to play. Uh, Kled is quite a good matchup for him, I would say. And yeah, like... He's just a tank, he has good engage, he has a good ult, and in solo queue he's probably pretty good because you can use force fights all the time with your ult when you need to, and you don't really have to play around anything. Like, you can just force whenever you want to, unless your carries are not available, of course, but then it's another story. You're controlling the engage champion though, so you should use your brain. You don't have to rely on your team to, do it, to use it. Alright, once again another tank, Maokai. I feel like this is, once again, I 
solid tank, uh, but not that solid as probably Orn or even Sion or Shen. Uh, I would put him at B tier as well. Uh, similar reasons to Malphite, he's decent in some matchup. He, he has nice healing, uh, he has nice survivability in lane, and he has nice engage and everything. Lockdown in teamfights, of course. Yeah, it's basically the same champion as Malphite, but in a different style, I would say. Uh, for Wukong now, okay, this is one of the weaker champions, I would say. This champion I would put at D tier. He doesn't really have anything going for him in top lane. Uh, it's really hard to play the champion. Like, your champion is designed around burst. Most of these champions can take the burst. Like, maybe an exception for, I don't know, Jace, but he still has that defensive ability with his knockback. And if you just do your combo in melee, knock him back, and then I'll trade him in range, you're just gonna win. He doesn't win almost any matchups. He, and he has to win lane as well. It's a laning champion that can't win lane, which is just hard to play. And he doesn't do well in team fights either. He doesn't do well at split pushing. It's probably the worst top laner maybe that you could pick right now, I would say. All right, and a change now. We went from the worst champion to maybe the best champion. I would say Mordekaiser is s here. here. Uh, well, he uses Conqueror really well, of course. He's kind of unkillable in lane, I would almost say. And his shield, his healing, everything is just amazing on him. Uh, Kled is one of the champions that do really well against him, so, and Akali as well, I would say. Uh, but as soon as you get level 6, uh, or Mordekaiser, you can start to out-trade most champions. Kled is the exception, I would say. And maybe Fiora as well. Like, there are some more than one champions that reduce your healing on Mordekaiser. Uh, which are really good against him, but it's really hard to play like for them and going later and later into the game Mordecai series are gonna get stronger and stronger in the one once and of course he can force one once with his ult He's probably the best champion in top lane right now, I would say All right, let's keep on going. Nasus, I feel like this is also one of the weaker champions uh, Used as Wukong. I would put him next to him in D here. It takes a bit too long to scale uh, the only real thing you've got going for him is a split push, but he doesn't have any gauge. Uh, his Q is kind of strong when you stack it up, and his W I would say is strong, but the rest of his kit is just kind of weak. He doesn't have any gap closer, he doesn't have any movement speed. Uh, he's easy to kite if you're ranged as an ADC or something. So yeah, I wouldn't say I recommend you to pick this champion. Maybe in lower elos he could be nice. Uh, if you get a lot of stacks, which you do a lot of times in lower elos because the games uh, usually lasts a lot longer because people don't know how to close out the games so I feel like that's a way that you can play Nasus and actually be strong with him but as soon as you get over like gold and plus like I wouldn't recommend you playing him all right now let's get on with a jungler type of champion I would say Olaf I think the champion is kind of strong mostly because of Conqueror but I feel like he he doesn't really do that well. Like, the one thing he got going for him is like lame bully potential. But if you dodge his Qs against him, uh, it's gonna be really hard to play for him. So personally I would put him at C, arranging uh, to B tier, but I would put him at C tier. He's not stronger, that much stronger than Gangplank, not that much stronger than like Garen, for example. And yeah, he's not as strong as let's say for Jace, Cannon or Nar. So yeah, let's keep on going. Orn, uh, this is a really busted champion. Uh, this is the best tank you can pick in the game right now. Uh, if you look to like play tanks or play team-oriented champions in the top lane, Orn is probably my first recommendation. I personally don't like to play him because you're playing a tank and kind of relying on your team existing, which I don't like in solo queue. But I would say he's a strong champion, I usually pick him team games so sometimes when I can, if it's the right opportunity and I need to play a tank, I would put him at S tier. Uh, maybe even S plus, but yeah, it's solo queue. Playing a tank is kind of awkward, you're not gonna exist in the laning phase too much. You're of course gonna exist, but not that much. He's good. Pretty good, probably the best tank in the game, like no doubt. So if you're out of field, pick this champion, like he's really easy to play as well. Alright, next on, let's look at Poppy. Uh, I think Poppy is also one of the stronger champions, to be honest. Uh, she does quite well against 
most meta champions, or not most, I should say, but maybe half of them. If you look at Kled, if you look at Akali, if you look at Orn, she does pretty well against these champions, because uh, they all have dashes oriented in their kit that they need to play around, but if you can't use them, of course, they are going to be a lot worse champions. She's not as good as, as Orn, but she has her moments, usually when you want a strong laner in a good matchup, but you also want a tank, that's when you pick Poppy. So I would personally put her at 8 here. Uh, she's really good at, against Orn, against like Fiora, against Kled, for example. If you see any of these champions that Poppy is really good against and you want to play a tank or even a bruiser kind of champion, go for it. I would recommend it. Alright, Quinn. Uh, this is once again one of the weaker champions I feel like in top lane. She's definitely weaker than these champions, so I would put her at D tier. Uh, there, I would maybe put her, like if there was a D plus or a C minus, I would put her there. But I don't feel like she's as strong as these champions. But she, she she's closer to D, the D champions than the C champions right now. Uh, the reason for that is she's really squishy and she doesn't have a lot of go a lot of going for her. The main thing that she does have going for her though is that you can roam a lot with her ult. But you also have to rely on you actually getting there. If you play against something like Kled or Akali or something, it's kind of hard to get her. Uh, if you're really good at her, sure, play her. And you can maybe pop off with her because you're still a ranged champion. You got uh, some damage, I'm not gonna lie. But there's just so many stronger champions if you want to play a ranged carry in the top lane. Even Vayne is, for example, is a lot stronger, I would say. And like she's just vulnerable to all ins, she doesn't use Conqueror. Like she's. She doesn't fit in top lane, I would say, but she doesn't fit anywhere else. She, it's a really awkward champion. Alright, Renekton is next. Uh, this is a champion that kind of fell out of the meta with Shojin along with Jax, uh, or with Shojin being removed. Uh, I would say he's solid still though, uh, in my opinion. He's not as good as he was, of course, but like I don't think, like if I see Renekton in solo queue, I don't think it was a bad pick, usually. I still think it's a strong individual champion, he has a lot of damage, uh, you can snowball hard with him sometimes, but personally I feel like there's better champions. I usually like you usually look at Renekton and say he's a lane bully of course, and, and you can also sometimes turn 1v2s if you're really good at him, but I feel like, like that's what he got going for him, it's the lane phase, after that he's just kind of falling off, and he's not as strong as Darius who is also like type of lane bully or rumble who's also lane bully like these are better champions coming into the late game and they also snowball harder i feel like or at least there is this rumble is better than both of them in team fights so like i would probably put Renekton even a b tier to be honest uh but he's a solid pick in matchups that he's good in because then you can really bully out your opponent but in a bad matchup like don't blind pick this champion because you're not gonna have fun in a bad matchup Alright, Rengar. Uh, I have mixed feelings about this champion, to be honest. I you don't see him a lot, you usually see him from one tricks or like some very special individu individuals, I would say. But he's a solid champion, if you can play him. Uh, I would probably put him at B tier as well. Maybe C tier. Yeah, probably C tier, to be honest. Because he's strong. He, you can, if you're smurfing and playing Rengar. Like, you can really pop off sometimes and carry games, uh, but you rely on that snowball happening. If you somehow die in laning phase or get ganked or anything, you're kind of screwed up. And, screwed up. and like, he's just a really risky champion. Uh, he brings some reward, not that much, so uh, there's better champions than him, I would say. Alright, Riven. Uh, this is a champion I don't have a lot of love for either, but I feel like she has her moments. Uh, but the same thing as Jax and Renekton, she kind of like fell out of the meta when Shojin was removed. Uh, but I still feel like she's a strong champion. Uh, sometimes you can pick her, but usually it's also a champion that either one tricks pick or like e if it's a really good matchup. But if you look at, at most of these champions, like A plus or like B even, like what champions does she, she do really well against? Personally, I don't find that many. Therefore, I would put her at C as well. 
but she does use Conqueror really well. If, let's say, for some reason, Shodan or something got back into the meta, or something relent uh, like Riven related uh, got added into the game, sure, she could be a solid champion, I think. Maybe even into A or S tier. But she's really overloaded sometimes. But right now, I just don't see her doing that well against most of these champions. Okay, Rumble. I feel like this is a hard champion, but he's kind of rewarding solo queue, I feel like, if you're really good at him. Uh, he can really carry games, he can snowball out of lane, like he does a lot of damage, uh, but he's a hard champion to play. And you can't really say either that he gets shut down from ganks, I feel like. Sometimes he can even 1v2, like if you're really good at him. Or he, if you get a counter gank and you're sitting there as rumble and then you're just laughing, like because you're just gonna kill the, the enemy to be too so easily. Uh, it doesn't do that great against Kled, and I wouldn't say it does that great against Mordekaiser as well. Uh, not sure about Camilla, I don't play that match match up that much, but I would I would probably put him at A tier. This is maybe a like bit of a wild card shout. I could see reasonings for him going down to B tier, but I think he's a solid champion. Like, I don't think he's that much worse than, for example, Ilaoi, well, or maybe even Aatrox. Like, he's really solid in lane. He's really solid as a bind pick as well, because he doesn't have that many counters. He can really win lane sometimes, and he does a lot of damage. He's really good to carry with. He's really good in solo queue, I think. So, yeah, I would recommend you learning this champion, but it's really hard to learn. So, you, if you don't have that much time to invest in learning champions, just leave him out of it. But otherwise, if you're looking to learn... New champions, especially AP champions that can carry in solo queue. This is a champion that I would recommend. Alright, Rice. Uh, Rice is also an AP champion, of course. And the main problem with him is that he has to scale. He can't really bully that much. But that being said, a lot of the champions that we have here is also range that has to scale. Uh, for example, Jace, Cannon. Uh, so I would say he's at least as strong as those champions, maybe even a bit stronger. Personally, I would say he's a bit stronger if you're really good at him and got a jungler to, to play around you or just the enemy jungler to not play around you, you can do solidly. The main problem with him is though is if you face something really all in it, like Renekton or Jace or whatever, and you like get ganked as soon as you get all in, like you're just screwed over. It's hard to play the game. But that being said as well, uh, for example, Akali or like Darius... Mordekaiser, like he does well against these champions, Orn as well. Uh, so he doesn't do that much against the meta champions, I would say. Which is interesting since a lot of these champions force all ins a lot, but like he does really well to parry them off, usually. Uh, his main problem, of course, is 1 2 s but uh, hopefully you can play in a safe way, put up a freeze or something. You usually are able to control the wave better than the enemy opponent because you have a lot of wave clear in the early game. So if you can use control the wave better than the opponent and create a freeze for yourself or uh, a slow push or something going when it, while the enemy is younger is on both sides he can be a really solid champion I think alright over to Shen uh, this is a champion that I used to hate a lot in solo queue I thought back in the day he was the worst champion in solo queue even when he was met up just because his whole kit is like revolves around him ulting bot or mid or maybe even on a jungler sometimes, and just like leaving your lane for your teammate to help your teammates and to help them like carry you in a way. Uh, but since then, my mind has changed a bit. I feel like you have so much setup for your team to carry you. Like you set them up. It's kind of like a support champion in the top lane. Like I think he's really solid to be honest. Uh, he's uh, really strong against a lot of the meta champions. I would say. Uh, with maybe Mordekaiser Akali being the exceptions because they are AP and he, he has to like play around his W a lot. But I think he's a solid champion. Personally, I would put him at S tier even. Uh, this is a champion that I would recommend you picking up to be honest. And yeah, I think he could do really well. Alright, Singed now. I think Singed is one of the worst champions once again. Uh... My reasoning for that is like mainly he's a tank once again that doesn't really go full tank. He's kind of a, like a bruiser AP kind of style, but I don't know. He's an awkward champion, you know. He runs at you, he flings you. If 
Singe is unlucky, you have some CC and you just CC him and your entire team kills him before he can do anything. Uh, he has some things going for him. Uh, sometimes he split push, like sometimes he can be solid in team fights if the enemy doesn't have a lot of CC. So I could see him working sometimes. But in all honesty, do I see him being as good as Riven, Rengar, uh, Gangplank, even in top lane? No, I don't see that. Therefore, I would put him in D tier as well, along with Quinn and Nessus. And Sion now. I think Sion is another one of the sole champions uh, for tanks. Uh, the argument can be made that he's weak, I guess, because his Q is easy to play around. Uh, but in all honesty, he's hard to kill. He's worse than Orn and he's worse than Shen, I would say, because he has less... Uh, not as good of an engage as Orn, but not as good as a good map pressure as... What the fuck is that? That's a plane? Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, anyways. Uh, I don't think he's as good as Shen because he doesn't have as much map pressure, I would say. And not that, not as much, like, as good lanes. But he's better than Malphite, he's better than Malkai for sure. Better than Mundo, I would put him at A tier. A solid A. Uh, I don't think he's a bad champion at all. And he has his moments in some matchups, he does a lot of base damage, so he's pretty good as a tank. I don't see that much problem with him. Alright, now over for Silas. I think Silas is a weak champion, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I would just put this champion at D tier. Almost leave it at that, uh, but I, he did get reworked recently. I haven't actually seen him in, been played once, once since then in the top lane. So in all honesty, he might be really strong. I don't see him being really strong though because a lot of the champions right now are just good at against him. So yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't pick up Silas most of the time, personally. He's just too squishy for the lane, and he just doesn't do. That well against all in champions. He does use Conqueror semi well though, but he has an awkward kit and he's kind of like teamfight oriented, but not really. Like he's hard. Uh, Timo, okay, I would just put him next to Silas over here beautifully. Uh, he has his moments, maybe. Uh, like he has some decent lanes, let's say for Fiora or Jax or even Kled maybe, but like if he. Let's say a Fiora gets on top of him, she parries her, he's blind, like Teemo is just dead after that, like there's nothing to say about it, he, you force Teemo's flash and the next time it happens you, he's just dead. Same with Jax, you just jump on the Teemo and then you stun him and then you beat him down as soon as the blind goes out and you take half his HP, same with Kled, and you just do that over and over again, and the few matchups that's actually good for Teemo is just not good. Uh, in some lanes he can maybe poke his opponent out. Uh, I don't know, let's say for example, actually I can't really say any matchups to be honest, I just think he's bad, to be honest, maybe if, I, if you play against, I don't know, Wukong, you can poke him out, but I, I wouldn't recommend picking up Teemo anytime soon. Uh, it cre creates for some interesting gameplay if he gets to the late game, of course he can shroom a lot over the map and it does tons of damage, like, for you not really doing anything, he do it does a lot of damage. So you're gonna see a lot of insane numbers for Teemo in the late game, if uh, on the damage graph afterwards. Uh, but in all honesty, I don't think it's that solid of a champion. You can just shut him down in the early game, and he's just not a champion after that. All right, Trindomir. I think this is. A, I think Trindomir is solid. Uh, the reason for that is I feel like the way you play Trindomir is just you go like you use limit us all the time, and you don't die from limit testing. You limit us, like you run around on one HP and you survive. Like it's a really retarded champion in that way. Like sometimes you can be really low and you just sit there pushing tower because you can just spin out and like, like get away really easily from ganks and everything. I would personally put him at A tier. Even if you do get shut down in the early game, like he's still gonna be a really annoying split pusher. Uh, if you're good at the air and use your brain properly, like you can do a lot on this champion, you can put so much pressure on the on, on the map. Uh, that being said, though, uh, he doesn't have any team fight going for him. The only thing, real thing in team fights is zoning with his ult. But I don't know. Personally, I don't think he's a solid team fighter. He's a solid p split pusher. When he gets level six, and you haven't po if you haven't poked him out enough in lane, he can dive you like really easily. Um, he has a solid lane phase. 
because of that. It's a solid split push later on because like this because of the champion is. Uh, if you wonder like how you fight Trinder it's just like you just wait although you just wait for him to not have fury and then you fight him. Like it's not that much harder than that. But I don't feel like he's strong as strong as these or str weaker than these champions. Or on the same level. I feel like he's stronger than them in, in a solo queue environment of course. Outside of a solo queue environment I would put Trindamir along with these champions in D tier, don't get me wrong. Uh, Alright, Uder. Personally, I never see this champion. Like, you see him once in a while, and I'm not gonna lie, he does really insane damage. Like, really insane. Um, the problem with Uder is although that he's pretty easily kiteable, and like, yeah. I'm probably put him in that seat here. He's definitely stronger than these champions, don't get me wrong. And but like he's not as strong as the B champions for sure. And against good players you you're just gonna get ganked and die. Alright, Urgot. I feel like I have heard mixed things about him. I haven't seen him that much, but I've heard he's supposed to be really good right now. Uh, I have seen him a bit and in all honesty I think he's a solid champion. I don't think he's as solid as S tier personally so I would put him at A tier. But I could see matchups where he's like S tier or even S plus. But personally, I just feel like if you play a ranged champion, you just kite him out. And if you play one of these champions, like you just fight him and you win most of the time if you don't misplay. So, yeah, I feel like he's good, but he might need like a small buff or something going for him for him to be really, really good. Alright, Victor. Victor, I feel like, is a really special champion as well. Like, he's he's not designed for top lane. It's too long of a lane for him. Personally, I would put him at C tier. He's not stronger than Gangplank, for sure. Like, if you look at Victor as a champion, he's like a late game team fighter who can maybe split push in some cases. And if you snowball on him, he's gonna be really strong, I'm not gonna lie. But the same is with Gangplank, and usually they both get shut down in the early game. That's how you win against them. And... Gameplay is probably strong in a solo queue environment just because he can have more map pressure. So if anything, I would maybe put Victor at the like C minus department or D plus, but that doesn't exist. And I feel like Gangplank is probably from B to C tier, and Victor is probably C tier in that case. So I would say he's a solid C, but a solid C it doesn't say that much. Uh, it can be good sometimes in the right matchups. Let's say you face Shen or something, he could be solid. Uh, but you have to, like, really play the champion well, and it's not that rewarding for playing him really well. Alright, uh, Vladimir. Well, this is, like, the same problem as with Victor, I feel like, but yeah, I feel like Vladimir could be solid. Uh, the main problem for Vladimir is getting past the early game, of course. But right now, I don't see him getting past the early game a lot against these champions. It's Orn and Shen as tanks. But in solo queue, you're not going to get the opportunity to pick sh like Vladimir a lot against these champions. So I would put him at maybe C -tier, B tier, because he does have his moments. He's definitely better than C champions, uh, but like he's not that solid to be honest. Um, yeah. Okay, next up, Yasuo. Uh, well, I feel like for Yasuo, he's a champion that needs to play like around like you can only play him if you ha he has a good matchup for top lane you can't pick him and expect to do like real well like i would personally pick him at, at ct because he's better than these champions i feel like uh but i do feel like like he's just not a good good champion overall in top lane but if you play against something like for example the aurelia or anar that's a really good matchup for yasuo he's gonna be solid but these champions are not super hard meta right now, which is why I wouldn't put him higher than C tier. He's a lot better in mid lane, if you want to play Yasuo, just play in mid, or, may or even ADC to be honest. Um, yeah, he's not better than C tier though, he has his moments in his some matchups, but nothing greater than that. Uh, Alright, um, over for the next one, York. I would say he's solid, personally. but. Uh, the main problem with Jorik is that he's really matchup dependent. Uh, let's say for Kled example, example you hard lose Fiora, Aurelia, 
anything that can kill your ghouls really easily with auto attacks or even some spells like for example the Kled E one shots the York ghouls the small York ghouls uh, some people don't know it uh, I didn't know it like half a year ago or something or a few months ago uh, when I realized that like my life became so much easier uh, and yeah like it's a weird bug but it really works so like if you see York is pick Kled right now or yeah, as I said, few are really other, all those are all also really good matchups. Uh, but if you see something like Mordekaiser, I guess, uh, Jace, uh, I don't know, Vladimir or Akali even, like Yorick could be solid. Usually Yorick is solid against the champions that don't have a lot of dashes and come to kill your ghouls, so you lock them up in a cage, and then you spawn your ghouls on them, and then they're fucked, basically. I would put him at B tier. He's stronger than the C champions, I, would, I feel like, but... He's really matchup dependent, and like he doesn't have a lot of going for him except the split push. All right, last up said. Personally, I wouldn't even put him on this list. I just put, took a random like list from the internet so I could put him together. <sighs> like he's D tier for sure. Uh, like he's not definitely not better than D tier. There's no room for him in the mint, in the top lane. I feel like. Uh, so. Of course, a champion that missed out on this list is now set. Uh, the new champion. Um, personally, I feel like for him, uh, set is solid in some ways, but he's really matchup dependent as well. You can I have tried him a little bit, but he feels really weak. But just because he doesn't have a dash, he's kind of he kind of has the same problem as Garen, is that you want to run at people and you want to be tanky, like. But you can just almost ignore him, like just back off casually, kite him, and yeah. Uh, the main strength though for Set is his, of course his W, so you just get a massive shield and you out fight your opponent. Uh, one good matchup of course is Garen for him, he's just a better version of him. Uh, I could see something maybe like Orn or even Shen Zion being good for him as well. Something that's tanky, but doesn't uh, just completely ignore you. And like something that's sometimes confusing is I feel like Kled and Olaf for example are really bad matchups for set uh, just because uh, you just get all in and you can't do anything like you got they get all in and you're like oh I'm gonna pop my shield then they, they just don't give a shit they keep on, they keep on hitting you and they hit harder than you, you do and you just die uh, so I would personally put set at maybe a B tier or e even a C tier Personally, I would put him at a B tier because he's really overloaded with his damage right now. Like, his numbers are just really insane. But his kit is just bad, I feel like. But yeah, I feel like that was that was uh, the tier list, guys. Uh, maybe another champion that I would put on here somewhere is Vayne. I would maybe put her at C or B tier as well. Uh, just because she does decent against some tanks. She can kite really easily. And yeah, that's like what she got going for her. But otherwise, I feel like I'm happy with this list. I'm probably gonna post this on Twitter if you have any, uh, like, if you have any thoughts yourself or want to share something. Of course, post it in the comments. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to be convinced if you think you have a better opinion uh, than something I said on this list. I'm ready to be converted, I guess. <laughs> and if you want to see more tier lists, I could do. One for maybe, I don't know, top lane, like a specific class in top lane or another lane. Or maybe even, I don't know, like a, I guess not a solo queue list, but a team list is probably what I would do. Alright, but anyways, thank you for watching and see ya.